In my last video, I said that we could see a dramatic change to the GPU landscape and it could become the perfect storm developing in 2022 for prices to come back to MSRP. One of those elements is Intel launching their new lineup of Intel Arc GPUs and we just received some latest leaks. Will Intel be the catalyst that returns the GPU market back to normal? Let's get into it. At Intel's Architecture Day, they announced Intel Arc as their brand for GPUs and they showed the roadmap for the next three future versions of Arc. This is a good sign as it shows Intel is committed to launching GPUs for the next several years and that game developers should not worry that Intel will abandon this project if it does not do well in its first year. The first generation is called Alchemist and we can expect to see these cards released in the first quarter of 2022. Intel showed a picture of two GPU dies, one large and one small. The large die is the high-end GPU, well, at least high-end for Intel in its first generation. Now, Raja had already tweeted out a picture of this die several months ago, and Locuza then did some work and tweeted out the die size as 396 mm squared. This die size is similar to NVIDIA's GA104 die, which is at 392 mm squared, and is used in the RTX 3060 Ti, 3070, and 3070 Ti GPUs. AMD's closest in size GPU die is Navi 22 at 336 mm squared. That is in the RX 6700 XT. Based on the silicon size, it is reasonable to assume the performance will be likely around a 3070. Some speculate that it will be more like a 3070 Ti, while others think it will be closer to a 3060 Ti. Will the new architecture excel at computing and perform better at higher resolutions like Nvidia's Ampere? Or will it be more like RDNA 2 and have great rasterization performance? I personally think they will both be right, with some tasks being better than a 3070 and some lower than a 3070. Also, the big question is how well will their drivers be optimized for games at launch? I suspect that Intel's first gen GPUs will be reminiscent of AMD's fine wine and that the performance of these GPUs will get better over time as the drivers improve. For now, let's just say it averages out to a 3070. The latest leak shows Intel pricing at the high-end GPU against the RTX 3070 at up to $499, which further confirms Intel's belief that it can compete in that performance range. Now the small die is around 150 mm squared, and I think it is well suited for laptops. In a low power configuration, this GPU will likely offer performance better than a GTX 1650 and closer to an RX 5300 while a higher power version could offer performance similar to a 1650 Super. It's definitely an entry-level GPU. Now that we understand roughly where Intel's new big die and little die GPUs will perform, should we be excited? Kind of, maybe? If we just ignore the whole GPU shortage thing for now, what does Intel have to do to make a splash in this market? Intel has three strategies here. One, plot into the Nvidia pricing structure based on its performance, like AMD. Two, offer a GPU that does more for the same price. Or three, offer similar performance and features for much less. Strategy that they choose will be very telling as to how serious Intel is to taking on Nvidia longer term for that GPU crown. If they choose the slot in pricing structure like AMD has done, then they will be profitable to satisfy their shareholders. However, they will not take significant market share and they will just be another player in the GPU market. For me, Intel will have to offer something better, like better video encoding or better upsampling performance with their XESS to justify the same price as Nvidia. To come into the market just offering similar performance and features for similar pricing would just be boring. And if they can't provide features that are much better in this first generation, then they will need to come out at a much lower price. MSRP price. I know, they're fake, they're not real, they don't exist anywhere. For now, just imagine this whole crypto thing was just a nightmare and dream of a day when MSRPs will be real again. By the way, if you like videos like this, hit that like button and subscribe for more and let me know in the comments below if Intel's Alchemist GPU performs and has similar features to a 3070, how much less would it have to be under Nvidia's MSRP of 499 before you would take a chance on this new Intel GPU? I'll tell you my thoughts at the end. With the high demand for GPUs, many people are saying that with a large company like Intel releasing GPUs into this market, that they will be able to provide GPUs in volume to alleviate the demand and we will start to have prices returning to normal. There is one problem with that thought. Intel is not using their large fab capacity to make these GPUs. Intel announced that they are partnering with TSMC and using their 6 nanometer process to produce these GPUs. Yes, 
That is the same TSMC that will also produce AMD's next generation of refresh GPUs and also refresh game consoles in the PS5 and Xbox. So how much capacity will Intel really have here to improve GPU supplies? Let's consider what if Intel was able to produce as many GPUs as AMD currently manufactures. Would that make a difference? In this market, no. In this market, there is an insatiable appetite for GPUs. If you want to know what the availability will be at launch, then the only questions you need to ask about Intel GPUs will be, how many mega hash per second do I get? And what does it earn per day? Because if this card mines well and is profitable, then you can bet that miners will be willing to purchase them with up to eight months ROIs. See my previous videos if you want to understand that terminology. And the bots and scalpers will be ready to buy them all up on day one and the nightmare for gamers continues. So if Intel GPUs won't save us, how will this market ever return to MSRP? Well, Intel GPUs will actually help, just not by themselves. There are several things in motion that will hit a tipping point next year where we can see this whole market unwind. What are they and when will they occur? We'll cover that next time. Thank you all. Wait, 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 wait. I almost forgot to give my thoughts on the question of how much lower would Intel need to price the GPU that was similar in performance and features to a 3070. If Intel uses AMD's slot-in pricing strategy, then they will not make an impact. I mean, who wants to buy an unproven GPU that is about as good in performance and features and costs the same? I wouldn't. Why would I take the chance and put up with all the headaches of a new GPU and new drivers? I'd just buy a 3070. Intel would need to be significantly lower in price, and for me, that's three figures or $100 lower for me to consider them. Intel needs to make a great first impression and gain a good reputation in this first gen. And they need to gain market share quickly so that software developers will prioritize and optimize for their architecture over AMD. If you want to understand more, check out one of these videos in this series. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.